I am Dr. Yogesh Pawde. I welcome you to the next session in this lecture series on genetics and molecular biology. Till this lecture, we have covered uh, topics like DNA replication, DNA repair, and transcription. So, let us discuss what are post transcriptional modifications of RNA in eukaryotes. The post transcriptional modifications of RNA are divided into four major types those are RNA cleavage then there are uh, mechanisms like addition of specialized nucleotides at ends of RNA then there are certain chemical modifications of nucleotides after that we may see there are subst various substitutions of nucleotides also seen during the RNA synthesis so coming to RNA cleavage under RNA cleavage you will see the mechanisms like RNA splicing that intron splicing we will discuss that in detail next is cleavage of transcripts after polyadenylation signal cleavage of precursors to various types of non-coding RNAs including rRNA, tRNA and miRNA cleavage of large mutagenic mitochondrial RNA transcripts also comes under RNA cleavage type of post transcriptional modifications of RNA then coming to addition of specialized nucleotides at ends of RNA under that you will see that uh, mechanisms of addition of 5 prime cap then we will discuss the polyadenylation under the same heading and we will see addition of CCA sequence to 3 prime end of tRNA so these three mechanisms are coming under addition of specialized nucleotides at ends of RNA then coming to chemical modifications of nucleotides you will see that there are three major chemical modifications of nucleotides one is base modification next one is sugar modification and third one is changes made to glycosidic bond in nucleotides then fourth one is substitution of nucleotides you will see the large RNA molecule is cleaved to form shorter sequences of RNA which will itself act as different RNA and that is the this is the mechanism of RNA editing so we will discuss these mechanisms in detail first of all we will see what is RNA cleavage that is RNA splicing so basically it is removal of introns from the het heteronuclear RNA so the initial primary RNA transcript is complementary to the entire length of the gene that we know it includes both exons and introns the genetic information which is there in exon needs to be separated by removing the intervening introns because the introns do not contribute genetic information to the final product okay so we need to keep the exons and remove the introns this primary transcript then undergoes RNA splicing whereby the introns are removed and the remaining exons are joined end to end to give a shorter RNA product which will only have exons which will have genetic information needed for protein synthesis. Only a small portion of the gene sequence is decoded and lot of junk is because of the introns which needs to be removed during the RNA splicing process. The RNA splicing need to recognize the splice junctions first of all because the mechanism need to identify where it needs to be cleaved and where it needs to be joined again that are nothing but the boundaries of exons and introns. The nucleotides at the end of introns are highly conserved. I mean to say that these are the sequences or the splice junctions which have not been change during the evolution so those are highly conserved the vast majority of introns start with gt gt sequence and in intronic rna that is gu and this intronic sequence ends with an ag so gt to ag rule is followed here and this gt to ag rule is highly conserved during the complete evolution so introns are starting with gt and ending with ag okay the conserved gt and ag nucleotides are not sufficient to mark the limits of an intron 
there are other mechanisms also which brings about specificity to the rna splicing mechanism the nucleotide sequences immediately adjacent to g tag are also quite highly conserved not only gtnag but other ad adjacent sequences also are highly conserved and they constitute splice junction consensus sequences those sequences add to the specificity of rna splicing a third conserved intronic sequence also important in splicing is known as branch site so branch site is not at the start or end of the intron it is somewhere between those two points and it is typically located no more than 40 nucleotides upstream of the intron's 3 prime terminal ag so that means the branch site is present between the start point and end point that is gt and ag of the intron sequences so approximately 40 nucleotides upstream means before the 3 prime terminal ag of intron sequence the other exonic and intronic sequences can promote splicing so those are called those sequences are called as splice enhancer sequences and there are sequences which inhibit the splicing also so those sequences which inhibit the splicing process is called as splice silencer sequences there are now four mechanisms with which the rna splicing is going to identify the exact site of splicing the hn rna sequence so as to produce an mrna first one is gt and ag rule second is splice junction consensus sequences third is branch site and there are other sequences also which are splice enhancer sequences and splice silencer sequences which give rna splicing of specificity and high fidelity of rna splicing and you know mutations in these sequences can cause disease definitely because without which the rna splicing will not occur properly and the proper protein will not be synthesized coming to the mechanism of rna splicing now this is a complete hn rna this is the exon part this is also the exon part and this is the intron part in middle of the hn rna molecule and as we have discussed that there are four mechanisms of identifying the splice junctions or the sites where intron has to be cut these are gt and ag sequences gt at the start and ag at the end so here in this intronic sequence you will not find t but you will find u here so gu at the start and ag at the end of the intron but there are other sequences also as we have studied so the adjacent sequences like spliceosome so the adjacent sequences like splice junction consensus sequences will also be there this is the a adenine at the branch site this is a branch site here around 40 nucleotides upstream the 3 prime end of the intron there are splicing enhancers and splicing silencers also present in the intronic sequence so in the first step what is going to happen is a nucleophilic attack on the intron's g5 prime gu dinucleotide so this gu sequence will encounter a nucleophilic attack by 2 prime hydroxyl group of this branch site this 2 prime hydroxyl group of the conserved a that is adenine at the branch site consensus sequence it will have a nucleophilic attack on this g a gonin at the 5 prime end of the gu dinucleotide or the start of the intron because of the nucleophilic attack this intron will get cleaved at 5 prime end and it will form a lariat like structure here because there is a cleavage of exon intron junction at the splice donor site that is e1 this is splice donor site and this is splice acceptor site e2 3 prime oh at the 3 prime end of the upstream exon this is upstream exon this is downstream exon this is splice donor site this is splice acceptor site so 3 prime oh group at 3 prime end of the upstream exon will 
carry out a nucleophilic attack on the splice acceptor site E2 and because of that the intron lariat and the splice exon site E2 will get cleaved. So the cleavage of the exon intron junction and the splice act acceptor site will be carried out and a uh, cleavage and release of the intronic RNA in the form of intron lariate will occur and two exonic RNA segments that is E1 and E2 will be spliced together to form a short exonic RNA segment. So this is the final exonic segment or the final mRNA product which will undergo translation to produce proteins. So this was one mechanism with which the RNA splicing occurs. Now coming to another mechanism of RNA splicing, there is a role of small nuclear ribonucleoproteins in RNA splicing. We have learnt small nuclear RNAs also and now we will learn what, are, what is the function of small nuclear ribonucleoproteins in RNA splicing. This is the unprocessed primary RNA transcript and within the spliceosome, Within this spliceosome, part of UN SNRNA, small nuclear RNA, is complementary in sequence to the splice donor site. This is a splice donor site or E1. This U1 will have a complementary sequence with splice donor site consensus sequence and it binds to it by RNA RNA base pairing. U2 also has a complementary sequence to the branch site. So, this U2 will also bind with RNA RNA base pairing to the branch site. Now, these two points or these two small nuclear RNA will be brought together by other small nuclear ribonucleoproteins. The interaction between the splice donor and splice acceptor site is stabilized by the binding of multi small nuclear ribonucleoprotein particles that contain U4, U5 and U6 small nuclear RNAs. So small nuclear ribonucleoproteins are nothing but small nuclear RNAs which have a complementary sequence to this intronic sequence. This U5 SNRNP binds simultaneously to both the splice donor and splice acceptor site. This is a kind of bridge between U1 and U2, splice acceptor site and splice donor site. This U5 will keep them together, holding simultaneously both the donor and acceptor sites. After that, there will be a cleavage releasing the intronic sequence. So, at this U1 and U2, there will be a cleavage and this exonic sequence E1 and exonic sequence E2 will be brought together after removal of intron they will be spliced together. So this is how the RNA splicing occurs with the help of small nuclear ribonucleoproteins. So now let us understand what are three classes of RNA splicing. There are three classes namely nuclear pre-mRNA that is spliceosome. We have just studied that there is another class of RNA splicing that is group 2 intron and group 1 intron is the third one. Group 1 and group 2 both are cell splicing but nuclear pre-mRNA RNA splicing requires spliceosome. This being the most it is used for most eukaryotic genes. It requires two transesterification reactions and it has an involvement of branch site A. It forms a lariate product and major and minor spliceosomes are also there which carry out RNA splicing with the help of spliceosome. In case of group 2 introns, it is very rare. Both group 2 and group 1 are rare. Some eukaryotic genes from organelle and pro prokaryotes are spliced with the help of group 2 introns. Nuclear rRNA in some eukaryotes, organelle genes and a few prokaryotic genes are, are seen to be spliced with group 1 intron cell splicing mechanism. So far as the transesterification reaction is concerned, the group 2 introns exhibit the similar facts as that of spliceosome mediated RNA splice. The most important and peculiar thing regarding group 1 intron is, it also requires two transesterification reactions, but its branch site carry nucleotide G, guanine. So, in which of the class of RNA splicing lariate is not formed, that is group 1 introns, because there is no adenine there in the at the branch site. So, there is no formation of lariate. 
it involves rna enzyme encoded by intron that is ribozyme so group 1 and group 2 both require ribozyme these are the mechanisms which we have just studied about the rna splicing this is the spliceosome mediated this is the lariat formation we studied before plus spliceosome and this is group 1 self splicing where the branch site has g instead of uh, a at the branch site right so here the branch site has adenine here also branch site has adenine but here the branch site has g and because of presence of g there is no lariat formation so this this is the difference between pre mrna spliceosome of mediated rna splicing group 2 and group 1 self splicing mechanism one most important uh, point to mention here is although these introns can splice themselves out of rna molecule unaided by proteins in vitro right but in vivo they typically do require protein components to stimulate the reactions okay so in vitro they may be not requiring the proteins but in vivo they require the proteins to stimulate the reaction now we'll see other mechanisms also where there is addition of specialized nucleotides at ends of rna so that is the second type of post transcriptional modification of rna now coming to addition of specialized nucleotides at ends of rna so first and foremost is addition of 7 methyl guanosine cap at 5 prime end of rna shortly after transcriptional initiation and polymerization of the first few nucleotides by rna polymerase 2 a special capping enzyme adds a modified guanosine so it is not after the complete formation of hnrna initial few nucleotides gets polymerized then this special capping enzyme will come into role and will place a special cap that is 7 methyl guanosine cap at the 5 prime end of the rna molecule but if you see the structure here this is the first nucleotide right and this is the 7 methyl guanosine cap you will clearly see that it is in reverse orientation from the rest of the rna so if we consider this as the forward orientation and this 7 methyl guanosine cap will show you the reverse orientation so both are facing each other this is a very peculiar thing of 7 methyl guanosine cap addition of 7 methyl guanosine cap to the rna molecule so it will be in reverse orientation from the rest of the rna molecule maybe that is the reason why 7 methyl guanosine cap gives the rna protection from various nucleus activities and this 7 methyl guanosine cap is connected through a triphosphate linkage that is 5 prime to 5 prime triphosphate bridge to the first 5 prime nucleotide okay so this is 5 prime to 5 prime triphosphate bridge the 7 methyl guanosine which is added to the rna molecule by special capping enzyme the guanosine is not transcribed from the dna in mrna synthesis in vertebrate cells the 2 prime carbon of the, of the ribose 2 prime carbon of ribose sugar of each of the two adjacent nucleotides means first nucleotide and second nucleotide of the rna sequence will get methylated so this will be the 2 prime o ribosyl methylation 2 prime o ribosyl methylation so remember this 2 prime o ribosyl methylation in addition to 7 methyl guanosine cap being added to the 5 prime end this is how the 7 methyl guanosine cap looks like when it is added to the rna molecule along with these two methyl groups at first and second nucleotide of so we'll see the mechanism of addition of 7 methyl guanosine cap to the rna molecule so this is the first nucleotide and here with reverse orientation this 7 methyl guanosine cap will be added so removal of gamma phosphate so alpha beta and gamma so this gamma phosphate needs to be removed it will be removed by rna triphosphate okay and mostly this is purine as a first nucleotide in rna molecule so the rna triphosphate is will remove the gamma phosphate of the original terminal 5 prime nucleotide after that there will be 
there will be an addition of guanosine monophosphate derived from gtp precursor through 5 prime to 5 prime triphosphate linkage to beta phosphate now gamma is removed beta phosphate is left there on the first nucleotide so the guanylin transferase will transfer the gmp through 5 prime to 5 prime triphosphate linkage to the beta phosphate of the first nucleotide and then the methylation of n7 of the new 5 prime terminal guanosine to produce 7 methyl guanosine by methyl transferase so the methyl transferase enzyme will add methyl group at 7 nitrogen position of this purine the complete process of addition of 7 methyl guanosine cap is explained now so what are the functions of 7 methyl guanosine cap added to the 5 prime end as we have already discussed it gives protection to rna molecule from 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease attacks so along with the protection this 7 methyl guanosine cap enables translating machinery to recognize mrna precisely it facilitates the transport of mrna from nucleus to the cytoplasm by properly recognizing RNA molecule with this identifying point that is 7 methyl guanosine cap. It facilitates RNA splicing also. It also facilitates attachment of 40S subunit of cytoplasmic ribosome to mRNA during translation process. Okay, so these are the five points or the function which enables the translating machinery. It prevents the attack from 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease enzymes and the transport is also facilitated along with that RNA splicing and the attachment of 40 subunit of cytoplasmic ribosome to mRNA during translation is also favored. So this was regarding the functions of 7 methyl guanosine cap. Now coming to the next modification of RNA molecule by addition of specialized nucleotides. So we'll discuss poly A tailing at 3 prime end of the RNA molecule. The 3 prime end is polyadenylated in the nucleoplasm. Addition of poly A, many adenosine are added to the 3 prime end leading to polyadenylate chain addition to the RNA molecule. Like the 5 prime methylated cap, the 3 prime end of most eukaryotic mRNA is not encoded directly by the gene. Neither the 7 methyl guanosine cap nor poly A tail is encoded directly by the gene. Typically, in a large majority of eukaryotic RNAs, the 3 prime end consists of 100 to 250 adenylate molecules and that is referred to as a poly A tail. Now we will discuss the addition of poly A tail to the RNA molecule. This RNA polymerase 2 has a multi-protein complexes required for polyadenylation. RNA polymerase 2 have many capabilities like helicase, ATPase and protein kinase activities it bears. And all, along with that for polyadenylation also the multi-protein complexes it carries on its own. And these multi-protein complexes help in polyadenylation of the RNA molecule. TPSF that is cleavage and polyadenylation specificity factor and CSTF that is cleavage and stimulation factor these are the two multiprotein complexes here CPSF and CSTF these are the two multiprotein complexes which are required for polyadenylation of the RNA molecule these two complexes cooperate to identify a polyadenylation signal downstream. So once the RNA polymerase is synthesizing HNRNA from a DNA template, but there should be identification of the signal where to stop and where to add the polyadenylate chain. The polyadenylation signal is downstream to the termination codon. So even beyond the termination codon, this polyadenylation signal will be present and it will cut the transcript. The polyadenylation signal comprises an AAU AAA sequence. So double AU triple A sequence or close variant of the same or some poorly understood downstream signals are also there which subserve the function of polyadenylation signals during the transcription of DNA. The cleavage occurs normally about 15 to 30 nucleotides downstream of the AA. UAA signal here this is the polyadenylation signal and the cleavage is going to occur after 15 to 30 nucleotides and 
the amp residues are subsequently added by poly a polymerase so poly a polymerase is the enzyme which adds amp residues to the rna molecule to form the poly a tail now poly a tail at 3 prime end is thought to protect mrna from 3 prime exonuclease the poly a tail also help transport mrna to the cytoplasm from the nucleolus it stabilizes at least some mrna molecules in the cytoplasm they enhance recognition of mrna by the ribosomal machinery so both 7 methyl guanosine cap and poly a tail are helping transport mrna from nucleoplasm to the cytoplasm stabilizes the mrna molecule in the cytoplasm they enhance recognition of mrna by the ribosomal machinery and protect mrna from 5 prime to 3 prime and 3 prime exonucleases respectively these are the functions of poly a tail now coming to addition of 3 prime cca sequence to trna all mature trnas have a sequence of cca at the 3 prime end we have studied the structure of trna and this cca structure or the sequence is going to accept amino acids right so amino acids bind to that sequence that is the acceptor arm and this sequence is uniform for all the trna structures if the trna is specific for specific for a particular amino acid still this sequence of cca will be common to all mature trnas the sequence will be there so in eukaryotes the 3 prime cca sequence is not copied from the same strand of the trna gene if it had to be copied from the same strand the cca sequence would have been different for each and every trna right the genetic machinery have evolved over that and the sequence has been kept common for all the trna because it is not getting copied from the same strand of the trna gene it is going to be same as a post transcriptional modification of trna molecule it is added by nucleotidyl transferase in the nucleus so this is the enzyme which adds cca sequence to the trna molecule 3 prime cca sequence is added by nucleotidyl transferase in the nucleolus this sequence is vital for ensuring correct recognition of the enzyme that will covalently link to the correct amino acid to the end adenosine so this is cca this adenosine will accept correct amino acid and it will ensure the correct recognition enzyme only after correct processing trna shall be exported to the cytoplasm so only after correct processing after addition of cca sequence the trna will be exported to the cytoplasm now coming to the significance of 5 prime capping and poly a tail in translation not the transcription because we have just studied the significance of 5 prime capping and poly a tail in transcription but now we'll discuss what is the significance of 5 prime capping and poly a tail in translation that is synthesis of protein both the methylated cap and poly a tail are crucial for efficient translation of the mrna into protein even though neither helps specify an amino acid so no amino acid is specified by methylated cap or poly a tail but till for efficient translation of the mrna into protein these post transcriptional modifications are required the eukaryotic translation initiation factors binds to the 5 prime cap and helping translation process in eukaryote to start the poly a binding protein associated with poly a tail at the 3 prime end and interaction of which shapes the mrna molecule into a circle so shaping the mrna molecule into circle by interaction of these poly a binding protein with mrna molecule uh, helps the translation machinery and enhances the initial steps of translation and stabilizes the mrna in the cytoplasm by increasing the length of time it can serve as a messenger then coming to chemical modifications of nucleotides the maturation of rna involves highly varied modification of nucleotides so we can't imagine the level of modification of nucleotides happens in rna so more than 100 different types of modifications are recorded in rna modification database 
at least 16 different modified nucleotides occur naturally in mrna okay and the modifications occur at the level of nucleosides and can be of three types namely base modification there is sugar modification and there is altered glycosidic bonding also leads to modification of the nucleotides along with that we have just studied 7 methyl guanosine and 2o ribosyl methylations also occur at the 5 prime end of the vertebrate mrna so this is also a form of chemical modification of nucleotides now let us study what are the chemical modifications of nucleotides so coming to the base modifications here the uridine and adenosine are base modified so uridine is base modified c5 and c6 of uracil are modified to form dihydrouridine so c5 and c6 of uridine are modified to form because this double bond is removed and only single bond is present so it forms the dihydrouridine one more hydrogen is added to 5 and 6 carbon atom so dihydro uridine is formed so this is chemically modified so coming to the second one that is adenosine getting converted into inosine by replacement of six amino group by a carbonyl group six amino group here this amino group is replaced by carbonyl group x six carbon atom okay so it forms inosine so adenosine is chemically converted into inosine coming to the next variety that is sugar modification so the ribose sugar getting modified so let us take an example of 2o methyl guanosine this guanosine is getting converted to 2o methyl guanosine here the ribose sugar is going to be modified the 2 prime oh group of the ribose is replaced by a 1 methyl group so 2o methyl guanosine then is formed by modification of ribose let us take an example of uridine again for glycosidic bond modification we have seen we have taken this example for base modification where uridine has formed dihydrouridine but now this uridine after modifying glycosidic bond it will form pseudouridine so how pseudouridine is formed pseudouridine is an isomer of uridine okay and it is produced by forming the glycosidic bond with c5 of uracil instead of n1 so otherwise this n1 forms a glycosidic bond with ribose sugar but in pseudouridine the c5 of the c5 of the uracil forms glycosidic bond with ribose so this is the difference between uridine and pseudouridine now coming to the mechanism of chemical modification of nucleotides the various modifications can occur in internal nucleotides in rna these are not the only i mean the the mechanisms of chemical modification base modification sugar modification or modification of glycosidic bond these are not the only modifications there are lot many other various modifications are also occurring in internal nucleotides mrna so the most common being n6 methyl adenosine in n6 methyl adenosine the methyl group is attached to the n6 position of adenine and the methylated adenosine often occurs in the sequence ag mac and others include 5 methyl cytidine and n6 2o dimethyl adenosine these are the other complex modifications of nucleotides these nucleoside modifications are specially prevalent in stable non coding rnas including ribosomal rna and these rna modifications are undertaken using different small nuclear rnas here for ribosomal rnas and the non coding rnas also include trnas which undergo lot of many nucleoside modifications the modified nucleotides in trna here approximately 12% of nucleotides in trna are modified this is a trna for glycine amino acid this trna has 74 nucleotides out of those 74 nucleotides nine show chemical modifications and out of those nine chemically modified nucleotides seven involve methylation so methylation is the commonest process of chemical modification of nucleotides
okay and here to specify the chemically modified nucleotides in trna glycine there are four five methyl cytidines one each of one methyl adenosine two o methyl uridine five six dihydrouridine and one pseudo uridine present so there are total nine chemically modified nucleotides out of which seven are the nucleotides which are modified with methylation process here uracil is methylated at its c5 to give thymine and the patterns of nucleotide modifications are highly conserved in different rnas that's why during the evolution this structure is highly conserved and these are some of the chemically modified nucleotides okay so i will not go in details of each and every uh, nucleotide mentioned here three major rna classes are synthesized by cleavage of a shared primary transcript here we'll learn the rna editing part just by editing the rna different mrna molecules are synthesized from the main or the major rna molecule in human cells there are 18s 5.8s and 28s rrna which are encoded by a single transcription unit of 13 kilobase pairs transcription unit it occurs within the tandem repeat units of about 40 kilobase pairs including roughly this 27 kilobase pair intergenic spacer also which is not transcribed into mrna but it is still there the rna polymerase 1 produces a 13 kilobase pair primary transcript to form 45s rrna so the transcription of this 13 kilobase pair unit will form 45s rrna okay and it will undergo a complex series of post transcriptional cleavages 45s rrna will undergo a complex series of post transcriptional cleavages to produce 41s 20s 32s rna and ultimately individual 18s 28s and 5.8s r rna molecules are released so from the same 45s r rna molecule with the help of rna editing three different r rna molecules are synthesized so this is this is the fourth and last post transcriptional modification of rna molecule we have discussed this is the literature which i have used for this compilation of the lecture series you also can refer to these references for your deeper studies thank you very much for watching this video hope you all have subscribed to the channel if you are not please subscribe to the channel so as to get notifications in real time about the upcoming videos in this channel and don't forget to press the bell button and select all option thanks again for watching the video Keep watching, keep learning and keep motivating us.